morning, day seven, Grand Enchantment Trail. The sun is starting to rise. The birds are chirping a lot. Uh, there's a nice breeze again, because this is uh, also the peak of that heat wave. And the temperature right now is so lovely. The temperature last night was really lovely. Uh, just sit there comfortably and look at the many, many stars without anything like a jacket. Um, it was just so, so comfortable. Problem is when I have nights like that, which are, I love nights like that, but when I have those nights, it means the day is usually pretty horrible. Um, so I expect it to get pretty hot pretty early today, uh, which is why I tried to do a little bit of night hiking. I think I got maybe 20 minutes in before I could just see the trail, so maybe not as much cool weather hiking as I'd wanted to. And heading south on the Arizona Trail, um, the trail junction where I veer off from the Arizona Trail is like 14 miles away, something like that. So unless I just need to stop today, I should be leaving the Arizona Trail for good by the end of the day today. And this is what it looks like when I'm walking through. It's early morning light. The moon is still out. Or is it over here? <laughs> um, not as scenic as some of my other mornings, but the trail is fairly flat. And it's a nice temperature and the wind feels good. Sun's a little higher in the sky now. So you can see what I'm walking through a little bit more. Just some desert shrubs. Got yucca, prickly pear whole bunch of shrubs that I don't know. Occasionally we have these little purple wildflowers. Do not know what they are. And wind's still going strong so it's still comfortable. And occasionally in addition to bird song I hear cow song. <laughs> They've been mooing this morning. So I'm headed towards Freeman Road which has a water cache. Um, and then I'm going to fill up some water at that particular cache. This is a particular dry section that I'm walking through right now. The trail signs for Trailhead at Freeman Road. And right in front of me looks like a water cache. Let's see what we got. Right. Ooh, thank you, trail angels. I also want to point out this is kind of nice. Uh, not only is there trailhead sign and register, there's a cute little bench right over here. So I'm seeing more signs of Grand Enchantment Trail hikers. Um, there's an AZT register there, and I know Masochist, who I met yesterday, is probably a couple hours ahead of me again, but I saw the names of five other people who say they're doing GET Eastbound within like two to three days of me uh, me coming to that that point as well. So I think it's about five. I did notice one of the registrations said they had dogs and um, I'm not sure I can really tell the difference between trail names and dog names at this point. So potentially five plus six if you count mascus within like two to three days of me on the trail. And I like the solitude. I do like solo hiking. Um, but it is fun to interact with people every once in a while. And um, I'm cool with people kicking steps for me on those high elevation traverses when I get there. So, uh, more GET hikers on the trail. I'm headed towards Beehive Well, uh, which is a water source. And that is where I will leave the Arizona Trail for good. Uh, it's in about eight miles. 9.30 and I already need a shade break. These, these shade breaks are getting earlier and earlier in the day. Um, I did find a tree that was casting some shade, but not enough. Um, so my sun umbrella is working again, so that's good. I got a little extra shade. It wasn't snapping up before and holding, um, but now it is, so I'm not going to question it. Uh, but today's getting really hot. I'm about 5.6 miles away from my next water source. So um, those are going to be interesting 5.6 miles. This is what I'm currently walking through. A little bit of change in landscape. Lots of choya. 
Choya and Rolling Hills. And then these little pinkish flowers down here. Um, I used to know what they're called and I forget right now. And every once in a while, we get some fiddle necks in with that Choya. And then sometimes there's a, you know, these little tiny yellow flowers that kind of will form almost a carpet in patches. <laughs> this is like a Choya forest. It's a little crazy. That barrel cacti here. Wow. Tons of different types of Choya too. Uh, there's at least three different species of Choya I've seen so far. Oh, it's so hot. It's not even noon. It's 11.50. Um, I was told Beehive Well has shade by Northbound AZT Hiker. I might be spending most of the day there. I'm trying to inch my way down. Anytime I get a little bit of wind, it's okay. But, oh my god, it is hot. It's, it just seems way worse than yesterday. Maybe it's because the elevation and terrain I'm in. But yeah, this is... This definitely feels like the peak of the heat wave today. Oh, such a nice sight. That windmill should be beehive well. I imagine there's a lot of people there right now, so I'm just gonna film it out here. The windmill's broken, but um, a solar well has also been installed there. And I'm gonna grab some water, mix up some electrolytes, and cool off. So the people who told me there was shade here um, must have come here early in the day. There's a tiny, tiny strip of shade just right next to this metal tank here. Um, so I've got my sun umbrella out and I'm basically pressed up against the tank and the tank itself is cool. Um, but considering I was supposed to spend a lot of time here, I'm um, definitely going to hydrate, have some snacks, and then uh, make the decision whether to stay here. There is another spring, 3.4 miles uh, down trail um, so I might go to that I don't know we'll have to see how long I can keep myself just plastered to this tank here leaving beehive well there's just a jackrabbit that's stranded in front I'm not sure camera caught that uh, I ended up finding a little bit better of a shade spot spent two hours there which for me is a lot <laughs> I mean, usually you get pretty antsy and want to move on um, I even got a little siesta in. Uh, so now I'm officially on the Grand Enchantment Trail only. No more AZT. This next section is really straightforward. It's just following this canyon all the way out. Um, you can see the clouds rolled in. Clouds have been a little bit of a miracle today. There was a, a cyclist at the, at the well as well. And even he agreed this today feels way hotter than it did yesterday. So it's not just me. But those clouds came in and they do help with the temperature. And I even got sprinkled on a little bit. I don't really understand the weather, but I'm not going to question it. So I've got a little under four miles to Putnam Spring. This is Putnam Wash. Uh, and I'll probably pick up some more water from there and see if I can't kind of get to the end of the, the canyon tonight. Look at all these swarrows that just appeared. They're all up on the other side there too. Let me zoom in for a second. The funny thing is this afternoon, even though I'm walking a wash, it's been so much uh, better temperature wise than uh, late morning today. These clouds, which are really bizarre, they're, they're like storm clouds whatever they're keeping the sun away. I could use a little rain <laughs> on me. I'd be cool with that. It's still hot, don't get me wrong, it's still hot. It's just not as unbearably hot as it was earlier. And now we have our swaros again. In addition to swaros, this canyon also has cows. I'm gonna try to give them as much room as possible and talk nice to them because I don't want to scare them especially when they have horns look pretty chill right now though so 
So I'd say Putnam Spring is running. <laughs> There's another cow. Um, the source is actually 0.3 up here. Wow, it's really running. This is really downstream from the source. Um, because it's been so overcast and not so hot, I haven't really been drinking that much water. So I might collect a little bit um, as kind of safety water, but I'm pretty sure I've got enough water from Beehive to make it all the way to my next water source. That's so fun to see, all that water, especially after being so dry. That section was super dry. Okay guys, I just need to come through. Can I come through please? Can I go around this way? There's babies here, so I don't want to scare the babies. Would it be okay if I snuck around this way? I hope so. I hope so. It's okay. It's okay. Can I go through? I don't want to be... Oh, babies, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, just don't gore me. Okay. Okay. Looks like they're going up that way, so I'll come this way. Whew. Man. They seem pretty chill, but like one of them did have horns. Did you look at this? I actually set up camp during the day. What a concept. I've actually got like a hour or two until sunset. I'm uh, just over to the side of Putnam Wash. Um, people do drive down there, so... Uh, definitely need to be off of that wash uh, after I set up camp. I did have some cows wandering beside me, so I might be sharing this campsite tonight. But really close to the to the end of it, of the wash. So tomorrow I will obviously be exiting the wash. I'm crossing the San Pedro River, going kind of around Bradenburg, Brandenburg Mountain, and then I'm going to be camping at the Brandenburg Ranger Station, which is the last leave campsite before Aravipa. Uh, so um, some of that stuff tomorrow has been described as rugged. Some of it has been described as steep. But I think it's only like something like 13, 14 miles. So I um, should have all day to do it. It's going to be hot. But, uh, but that should put me in a really good position for my permit day for Aravipa.